Hello, Mrs. Hobbs. Well, Mrs. Forbes, where's that beautiful baby of yours? He's home. Oh? Well, my sister-in-law's watching out after him. Oh. Well, you surely found the nicest peaches. Your husband hasn't lost his appetite, has he? That food in there is just poison. Well, how long will he be there in the sheriff's lockup? Uh, so you can visit him, I mean. Until the Supreme Court hears his appeal. Oh, and then... And then he comes home. Uh, well, we all surely hope so. Mrs. Forbes, take a look at these pictures. Oh, this man looks like my husband. Who is he? His name is Dennis Sullivan. Somebody in town today mistook him for Doug. Wanted to know how he got out of jail so quick. You found him. This is the man. No, this... no, Martha. Believe me, I've checked it. But this guy may be able to help us out. Now, Martha, I have some good news. The state Supreme Court has decided to hear our appeal. Oh, that's a wonderful win, not, man. Not for a while. And it isn't a sure thing, Martha. Louis May is nervous because of this appeal. That's why he's decided to prosecute Doug again for the Delaney rape. That way, if he wins, Doug has to stay behind bars no matter what the Supreme Court does. Why is he doing this? Why can't he see? Thank you for telling me. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. telling your teacher all these things? That you're starving because we don't have any food? I don't put you to bed until three and then I wake you up again at five? Shelly, look at me. Those are lies. God won't help us. Shelly Forbes. Then why'd you stop taking us to church? Because... The church isn't always God, honey. Sometimes it's just people who send you fruit instead of standing by your dad and us when we need them the most. That's why we stopped. So it's like God, only he doesn't give us fruit. Shelly, stop it, please. Why can't daddy just come home? Why can't God just let him? He's coming home, honey. He's going to go to court again, Mama. Now, Mrs. Delaney, calling your attention to the day in question. You previously identified the defendant as your assailant, didn't you? Yes, sir. Well, now, for the benefit of this court, this jury, could you point him out again? And you can stand up, let the jury see you do it. That's the man. Can we have the record show that the witness identified the defendant, Douglas Forbes, 
Thank you, Mrs. Delaney. It's your witness, Mr. Cowan. Please sit back down, Mrs. Delaney. In your testimony, you stated this man was about 5'9", 5'10". That's correct. What do you say to the fact that the defendant, Douglas Forbes, is much taller than the man you described? Well, I'm, I'm saying that I was guessing his height as best I could. You used the term guessing. Is part of your identification guesswork? Oh, Your Honor, can Mr. Cowan be asked to step back away from the witness? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Now, Mrs. Delaney, would you take a look at this photograph? Except for the hair being longer, do you recognize this man? Uh, objection. There's been no groundwork laid for introducing that photograph. I don't know where you're going, Counselor, but um, I will let the witness answer the question. Can you say with certainty now that that's the assailant? I can say without a shadow of a doubt. That is the man who came into my house and raped me. Really? Because these photos aren't of Douglas Forbes. They're of a man by the name of Dennis Sullivan. Thank you, Mrs. Delaney. No more questions. Be direct, Mr. May. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mrs. Delaney, you're a good church-going woman. You read your Bible, I know. You believe in the Bible as the Word of God? Oh, yes, Mr. May. As sure as I'm sitting here, I do. Because you swore on that Bible to tell the truth. And I'm asking you now to tell the truth. Are you guessing when you're identifying your attack? No, sir, I'm not. Photograph or no photograph. But looking at that man in real life, I know that it's him, Douglas Ford. peaches and plums, but the last one had oranges and apples. Well, that's thoughtful. That they didn't repeat, I mean. Martha, Martha I... 